Hello everybody, this is Ariane Arsenault and today I am presenting part two of my video series with the Wooden Wick Co. If you haven't seen part one, you can click right up there and follow the link and then come back to this video after seeing the part one, which was actually presenting the products. Today, in this video, we're going to be making the candles. On my right here, I have some vessels from the Wooden Wick Co. I have the Aura vessels and the two-tone ceramic vessels. These were my absolute favorite and I am in love. <laughs> I also have some fragrances that I've selected and I've organized all of my wooden wick, wood, wooden wick clips, everything uh, in here so that when I look for, for something, everything is organized. So I've opened my containers with my um, sample kit. So I have all of my wicks here and then I have my clips and my tools in this other box. I will now go ahead and melt the three different waxes that I've gotten from the Wooden Wick Co. So I have the Wax Discovery Kit and I will melt enough wax to make one candle with each wax and then I will be scenting them with different fragrances. The difference between a Wooden Wick candle and a Cotton Wick candle is mostly the material that is used to make the wicks, which is of course wood, and the relaxing and soothing crackling sound they produced. I will give you a closer look so you can see them and listen to them. This beautiful candle is made using the beeswax cocoa cream uh, wax from the wooden wick and a crackling booster wick in the two-tone ceramic vessels. To make the candles today, we're gonna need some uh, melting and pouring pitchers, the wax, the different waxes, the wooden wicks, the clips, and the tools. I also have some uh, paper towels, a thermometer, some stirring utensils, a heat source, and a knife to cut my wax, as well as a scale to weigh my wax because I always make everything, whether it be candle, soap, or any cosmetics, on a scale by weight. I have identified each pitcher so that I know which wax is in each of them and that I don't get confused as we go along with this video. Let's start with the virgin coconut soy. And this one will go in an aura vessel. I'm actually making this one for a friend. So the aura vessel is very big. I decided to use 12 ounce of scented wax for this one which means I need 312 grams of wax and 28 grams of fragrance oil. The waxes from the wooden wick come in slab form. They are very easy to work with. You can just take a knife and cut through them, or if you have a metal spoon or an ice cream scoop, they're very easy to work through. So I'm gonna chunk this one up so that I can weigh the correct amount. And this is the virgin coconut soy. Let's move on to the cocoa apricot cream. And by the way, if you notice on the package, so let me show you, it's actually cocoa apricot creme in French. I find that pretty cool because <laughs> I'm French, you know, right? A French Canadian. So it's not cocoa apricot cream, it's cocoa apricot creme in French. All right, same thing. I'm gonna cut through the wax. And these wax are very soft. They're perfect for a container candle. Uh, they're not meant for votives, but they are great and easy to work with if you make container candles. And I have to say that because I've tested them before doing this video, that the glass adhesion from the virgin coconut soy and the cocoa apricot creme is amazing. Let's move to the beeswax cocoa creme. The beeswax cocoa will be used in a two-tone ceramic vessel. I actually, I've selected the pink one because it's for me. And I'm going to go with an 11 ounce fill, which is 311 gram or so. Um, so I need 285 grams of wax. And it's this wax is a little harder, but it cuts very easily with the knife. It just takes a little bit more uh, pressure, but not a big deal. All three waxes are weighed and ready to be melted. You can do this by using a double boiler. If you're working in larger batches, you can use a wax melter, a Presto pot, 
Um, there's many ways to melt your waxes. You can also use a direct heat method, but if you do that, you need to stay close to your wax and never leave it unattended. An easy way to create a double boiler is to use a larger stock pot and insert your wax picture into it and then place that on a heat source. While the wax is melting, let's go ahead and get our vessels ready. So for the beeswax coco creme, I need to use a 0 0.03 thick booster wick in at a 0.5 inch dimension. I will also be using the same thickness for the virgin coconut soy because this is what the wooden wick recommends on their wick selection guide for these types of waxes. And for the apricot, uh, the cocoa apricot creme, I'm gonna be using the booster wick, but in the 0 0.02 thickness, and the width will be six, uh, 0 0.625 inches for the aura vessels because these are 3.5 inch wide um, on the inside, while this one is about three inches. So the wick clips are, are made to hold your wick up straight, and then the way that they are made, they, they really like clip and hold firmly. And then this really helps you position the wick within each vessel. And then you don't need a wick centering tool to do so. So let's put the wick clips right here and find the correct um, wicks for, the, for each vessel. Because these are from the sampler uh, wooden wick kit, you need to measure the, the width of your wicks if you're not sure. I've been using them for a while now and I'm really used to uh, finding the, the different dimensions. So I'm, I'm pretty much guessing that this is the 0 0.625, but if you want to make sure, you're going to take a ruler and you're going to put your wick onto it and see that it is the correct wick. And it is, okay? So we know that this is the 0 0.02 thickness. This one is going for the Africa Cocoa Cream. A 0 0.03 thickness. We're going to use the same width. Yep, for the Virgin Coconut Soy. And the 0 0.5 for the Beeswax Cocoa Cream. I'm pretty sure this is the 0.5. I'm just going to make sure. Put it on the ruler. Yes, it is. Okay. Before you get started, you can wipe all of your vessels. I like to use a, a microfiber cloth so that it picks up any dust that may be inside the vessels. And there you go, you're ready to start making candles in these. I like to use wick stickers for all of my candle wicking, whether it be cotton wicks or wooden wicks. So I'm just gonna take three out of my roll. And here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take the wick and then you're gonna push it in, in the clip. There we go. And then you peel off one side of the wick sticker, place your wooden wick on it. And then you find the center of your jar and you just stick it in. There we go. Do the same thing for all of the candles. There you go. The clips also ensure that the candle cannot burn lower uh, than 0.5 inches from the bottom of the vessel. This protects your jar from overheating and shattering if it's made of glass. So this is a really nice feature about the, these clips because many people won't think about it and they'll burn their candle all the way to the bottom even though the warning label clearly says to stop burning when there's half an inch of wax remaining. Now, people may think that they're wasting wax. What I tell them to do is just pour that remaining wax in a wax melter and then you can enjoy the aroma for the wax you have left over. The virgin coconut soy wax will be paired with a fragrance oil by the Wooden Wick Co. called Blackberry Saffron. And I will go ahead and measure and weigh it in my picture. And let me show you a little trick that I've learned because uh, I'm a soap maker. And when you don't want to make a mess, you can get a skewer or a, I use a chopstick, but this works with any kind of a, an object that is in this kind of a shape. And I've actually learned this trick from Kenna from modern soap making many, many, many years back. So if you don't want um, fragrance down your bottle, just put your stick onto the edge of the 
the bottle and it will slide down this rather than down the bottle. Let's get this fragrance oil combined and bonded with the wax. I will stir gently for about a minute and then we will pour. This next step is pretty simple. Simply take your pouring pitcher and gently, slowly pour down the center of your vessel. And that's it. When you're done, while the pitcher is still warm, take a paper towel and wipe off the wax excess with a paper towel. This will really help cleaning out later as you don't wanna wash wax down your drains. This could clog your drains. So let's move on to the cocoa apricot cream. And this one will be paired with a fragrance oil called coconut and acai, also from the Wooden Wick Co. I am at the perfect temperature to add my fragrance oil. And again, I will use my chopstick trick to get the fragrance oil in my pot rather than everywhere else. Gonna stir a bit. Mmm, oh my goodness, I love it. Smelling a fragrance out of the bottle is always different than when you incorporate it into soap, candles, or any other product. And I love the hot throw in this one. You can actually smell the hot throw of the wax because it's actually hot and melted right now. So it gives you a good idea of what it will be later. We are at a perfect pour temperature, so let's go ahead and fill this beautiful gunmetal aura vessel. The beeswax cocoa creme is melted. Um, this one needs to be poured at a lower temperature, I believe between 137 to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the wax right now is at 165, so I will pour my fragrance in it, but first I'm going to remove it from the double boiler. I'm just gonna wipe this to make sure that I don't have any water in my wax. I am pairing this wax with the cashmere and vanilla uh, from the Wooden Wick Co. And this is a very luxurious smelling fragrance oil. It has hints of vanilla, but like a more modern scent to it, I guess. I don't know how to describe cashmere, but it smells really good. Maybe like a little bit more soft and powdery than standard vanilla. Because there's beeswax in this wax blend, um, it did clump a little bit upon adding the fragrance because it was much cooler than the wax, but just a gentle stir will get everything melted back in. So let's go ahead and pour. The next step is to leave these candles undisturbed to harden up and cure for 24 hours on a flat surface. However, since I've made uh, all of these waxes into candles yesterday, I can show you how they burn and how cool the crackling sound is. This is the beeswax cocoa creme wax that I've made yesterday. It is made in a 0.5 width by 0.03 thick or uh, crackling booster wick. It burns beautifully. This is a almost two hour burn pool. The flame is perfect. It's not sudding and it's between half an inch to an inch tall. So that's what we're looking for. Here in the Aura vessels, I have both the virgin coconut soy and the cocoa apricot 
cream here. Uh, you can see that the flames are a bit different. That's because I've used two different wicks. They are both in the 0.625 wick, but the thickness on this one um, is the 0.03. And here with the cocoa apricot creme, I have 0.02 in thickness. Would you like to try your hand at making wooden wick candles too? That would be great. And the Wooden Wick Co. has a gift for my viewers. They're offering you 10% off by using the discount code written right here. So grab a pen or pencil and a piece of paper, mark that down, and then in the description box below, you will find the link to the Wooden Wick's website and you can go buy some supplies, wax, wicks, vessels, anything you need to make candles and get 10% off. The wax is set, it is now time to trim the wicks and finish the top of some of these candles as we do have a little bit of dip and pull away uh, or delamination on some of the candles. The beeswax is the one that uh, like that retracts the most so you can see that the wax is not adhering to the glass all the way around but we can easily fix this. To trim the wicks, uh, you'll need a pair of heavy-duty scissors. So what I first do is I just trim off whatever sticks out of the jar. That's easy to do. And then I have some of these. Uh, these are called and cutting nippers. And I just take them. They have a very like wide, flat uh, blade. <clears throat> so I just use these to trim... My wooden wicks, they are so easy to use. And I find that they are a little bit sturdier than the uh, wick trimmers, especially when you're using uh, thick wooden wicks. And if you're just gonna be trimming candles at home, a wick trimmer is a great tool. However, if you're gonna be cutting several of these a day, uh, you're gonna end up like having sore fingers. So I definitely like these better as when I make wooden wick candles, I make a whole bunch. I have an embossing heat tool. You can use a heat gun. I just like this one for candles um, as it blows hot, but not like with a strong blow. We're gonna turn it on and just gently move around the wax until it melts, being careful not to overheat the wick so that it doesn't catch on fire. Let's let this one cool down and move on to the next one. I hope you can see this, but when you pour a candle, um, there's kind of a dip. The surface of the wax kind of goes up, uh, down and up towards the wick. And that's what you want to try and smooth out to get a flat surface after the wax has solidified. Otherwise, it doesn't give you uh, the right measurement when you cut and trim your wicks. Once the wax has resolidified, take a ruler and measure that it's at least 3 16th of an inch or five millimeters above the wax. If you sell or give away your candles, remember that you have to put a warning label somewhere on the jar so that you have all of the required um, safety information so that people know how to take care of their candles and they know how long to burn them and how to trim their wicks. I hope you've enjoyed watching the process of making candles using the wooden wicks. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel as I have many videos coming up on soap making, candle making, and other handmade cosmetics. Thank you so much to the Wooden Wick Co. for sending me their sample kits, the fragrances, and the beautiful vessels so that I could make a video for you guys and test the waxes with their wicks. It was amazing. I love their fragrances. I am over the moon happy with the end result. Um, you can also click the eye right above me right here and this will link you to the Wooden Wicks YouTube channel where they have amazing videos for crafters who wish to learn more about candle making using the Wooden Wicks. 
Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys very soon in a new video. So relaxing.